That's my number one reason why I don't use the drive in there. All right, so welcome again. This is take two of the first stop of the night hacking Java 8 tour, where we're in Munich at Appleton headquarters, joined by Tony Apple, who's going to give us a presentation on Duke Script, which is a um, it's, it's an emerging language on the JavaScript virtual machine. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> or we're That's probably to a very good description. Get push Java back into the browser. Yeah, we want to uh, because JavaScript has Java in its name, but there's no real Java uh, in the browser. So uh, yeah, that is. We want to put the name Java back in JavaScript. That's completely unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're joined here by a whole bunch of folks in the audience. So what I was thinking for an agenda, we'd first kind of do introductions. And um, you know, just talk a little bit about you know who you are and what sort of stuff you're hacking on. Maybe um, what, what's a good topic? YouTube. We'll come up. We'll come up with an interesting topic for everyone to chime in on. This is my job, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. This is the only thing that came. So, so well, we actually, can start with so Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> What? So the first, the first thing is the cameraman has to introduce, or the um, <laughs> audio person has to introduce himself. The so. audio person has to do, introduce himself. Right. Who are Hi, you? I'm Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in Munich? You don't belong here. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> this morning I got into a, tu a, you know, a tube, and you know, I got out of the tube, and here we are in Munich, right? Okay. Um, I came here for the night hacking tour. Awesome. And I wanted to um, So do you bring your motorcycle? Are we going to hop on the Autobahn tomorrow, together tomorrow? Uh, my motorcycle comes with four wheels. <laughs> is, that, is that a motorcycle? <laughs> well, the handicap ones. <laughs> it's a handicap motorcycle, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very nice. So no, uh, uh, yes, no, um, <clears throat> no motorcycle here, I'm afraid. Um, okay, anyways, All right, let's, so let's get first, to the real people our first, here, right? Our first guest. Our first guest here, yeah. yeah. yeah hello, uh, I'm uh, Axel, I'm a teacher at a vocational school here in Munich, and I'm teaching uh, programming and other subjects. Cool. Cool. And, oh, you get... Uh, oh, right, you get a yeah, coaster. You, you get a coaster. Thanks. There you go. Fantastic. Laptop sticker. Oh, hold on, do you want to give me the rest of the coasters? Because I can hand yeah. them over. Yeah, uh, you can. Unless you want to go uh, no. over the camera. Here we go. And let's start in this corner here. So, just, you know, you say who you in. are. Hello, my name is Jürgen. I'm a freelance programmer and my topics uh, are uh, from the area of financial mathematics. Financial mathematics. Oh. Here, okay. That sounds impressive. Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Marianne. I'm working at university and I'm interested in IT security and web engineering. Cool. Yeah. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Jens. Um, I'm uh, yeah, mostly Java developer. Um, yeah, during the day, I'm doing boring stuff like Java EE and JSF and um, web websites. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, during the nights, I'm coding mostly Java FX. So. Nice. So, so the um, you're the you're the one who responded to the chocolate thread yesterday, right? About the screen. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. So the Andrew said he's going to fix your problem, or he got in touch with you. Uh, he had in touch. Yeah, he okay. was in touch with me, and uh, he will send me a new uh, a new, new device. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, it's excellent. It's working now. <laughs> so, so this is the guy that's actually using FX. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. Excellent. excellent. <laughs> Okay, I'm Dino. Um, I'm also a software developer and software architect for Java EE. And uh, in my spare time, I'm working on a little bit of uh, Java FX on iOS devices. Cool. All right, hold on just a sec. Uh -oh. Because yeah. we'd like you guys to be able to see what's going on on the stream. Yeah. And you guys can't see it now. There you go. That's there great. Oh, Much right. better. Okay. Now you see I have my arm in front of your nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not an elephant. All right. Next. Uh, next. Okay. Oh. Hello. I'm Miro. I'm a Geekon co founder of Java Conference. And yeah. 
I was surprised to see you were in yeah. Munich because I, I, I met you in Krakow for yeah, the first time. I, yeah, yes, for a while, yes, of course. I've been living in the Prague, Zurich, Brussels, and here in Munich I'm working as a software developer and architect and spring guy, but we are using the Java Fix as a part of our system. I'm the architecture of uh, the webs, web server, uh, a remote system, a remote management system, which collects the embedded system and communication over to Netty we are using, and Java Fixes as a provider to display what is going on on the real devices. It's like we are using as an interface. Cool. That's all. And I'm living here, and I love Munich. <laughs> 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 and a beer. Nice. <laughs> all right, now you actually live here, don't you? Uh, close by, at least. I mean, it was still an hour trip. Although, I would never guess because I see you at conferences all around the world. Yeah, but I never actually I mean, home. He doesn't work. He just goes to conferences, I think. I, I That's awesome. Awesome. Don't tell my employer. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so wow. this is this is your big chance to plug Javaland. Um, yes, thanks. I mean, Javaland is the new conference. We are starting in a couple of days. Um, we are not even not really sold out, so there are some tickets left. You could actually come and see a beautiful schedule. Um, it's going to be a real cool one. Stephen will be there. We'll have a nice Java 8 launch, and we have plenty of attractions. So. When you're tired of wearing out your brain during the day with awesome sessions, then it comes to roller coasters and fun. And yeah. uh, who knows me knows that it's going to be a real cool show with plenty of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and beer. <laughs> Did I mention beer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I popped up Java Land on the screen so people can see the logo. Sure. Again, and they know they know where to get, get there. Everybody will be there. It's going to be a huge new thing. Are you going to introduce a little? Yes. Yeah. No. Yes. yes. We are. Okay. We we introduce everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so so this event was made possible by. <laughs> just just you know say your name. Say your name. My name is Bravo. Very good. Oh. <laughs> and she's the brains behind. I'm responsible for the year. For beer. <laughs> And food. And food. <laughs> the food and beer manager. And <laughs> I think I think it's appropriate to plug J Day at this point, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The two J Day since, since, coordinators. Since you already me uh, mentioned the uh, the spin off conference from J Day, <laughs> Java <Yeah>. Land. <laughs> <laughs> you probably should have mentioned. Men mentioned J Day, um, and J Day is uh, coming up because I've I've been asked actually by the guys here when the next J Day is going to be, and uh, it's probably going to be on July first. So um, Canada Day, you're going to have great speakers there, and and a couple of them are in the audience. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> okay, so come to J Day. Yeah. Okay, very good. And you have to introduce this little guy here. Oh yeah, our official mascot of the night hacking tour. Hi there, hi there, little guy. So I think I think he needs to um, wave hi to the audience. If I can hook up to the network because we couldn't get the proper network configuration. <laughs> in yeah, we should have a specialist here. We, we, that should, kind we, of should, stuff. we should definitely have a specialist. Is he is he following you there, Kurt? Yeah. Is he trying to attack you there? No, I just don't point at him. Don't point at him. Right, don't look him in the eyes. Okay. Okay. He's very good. He's a, so. he's a mime. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. And I, I'm getting some feedback. We have some echo on the stream. If you're if you're on the live stream and you're getting some echo, try refreshing the browser, because that's a common problem with UStream. Is sometimes the um, the client end has issues with echo. And we muted this. And that helped. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so give that a try. And if you're still having issues with echo, um, Jim, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> And let me let me just reply to him. So try refreshing. Look 
<laughs> yeah. Which one is it? This, this one? You trying to stick it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Without breaking it. All right. There we go. Good enough. All right, so what's our official drink of the evening here? Yeah, <laughs> welcome, Stephen. Welcome to Munich. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we not have a, a drink for him? Very good. This is a local beer? Yeah, this is very local. It's The brewery is just, around, just down the street. Yeah. Augustiner, yes. Augustina, yeah. Very good beer. All right. And what, what are you gonna What are you gonna show us today, Tony? Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, Duke Script. As uh, As I already mentioned, this is an attempt to really uh, get the Java into JavaScript. And um, we actually kicked off uh, this project. Um, almost two years ago, one and a half year ago, years ago. Um, and it's mainly developed by uh, Jaroslav Tulach. And I met Jarda in, in Linz, like every year, where, he, uh, where we give a course at the Johannes Kepler University, and he always brings some cool projects, and he convinced me to join. Cool. And yeah, he... Uh, brought back to browser and the idea behind back to browser was um, that all of the all of the companies are now starting doing HTML5 and JavaScript and um, projects and and as soon as the projects get bigger they are running against walls and they even start conferences uh, about how to get rid of JavaScript <laughs> because it's a maintenance nightmare to uh, code larger applications in JavaScript. And there are various efforts to, uh, to solve this problem. And um, the actual solution would be to use, well, Java. Uh, but the problem is that Java is not running on all of the interesting devices, at least, uh, only in a limited manner. So you cannot just start, write a Swing application or and, and, and deploy it to uh, the iPad or Android and stuff. So the idea behind the project was to make Java run on every device that has a modern HTML5 capable browser. And um, yeah, with the help of Chuck Norris, uh, <laughs> who is known that he can do a lot of uh, cool things like instantiate abstract classes, he, and he uses generics since Java 1.0, he overrides final methods, and we actually proved that he can also run Java on the iPad and Android without a jailbreak. So um, the project Back to Browser uh, was successful in proving that it's possible. And basically, Back to Browser is a Java virtual machine that runs in JavaScript, and you can uh, have your Jar files, your bytecode, execute in any modern browser that is capable of doing JavaScript. It's a really cool project and uh, we did a lot of talks and uh, we earned a lot of respect. The Arda earned a lot of respect because we did this uh, roundhouse kick uh, and, and, and proved that it's possible to run Java in all, on the iPad and, and all of the cool devices. But somehow um, we, we, we realized that uh, the respect that we earned uh, is, 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 is in a way like um, it, was, it was somehow treated like an academic experiment. <laughs> because we did not really, I think we did not really focus on the, uh, on the most important part of it. And that is not that it's, I mean, it's cool to write it. Java virtual machine that runs in the browser, but in the end you are not going to convince somebody to use your technology just because you can do that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 nice, but but it's not uh, it's it's not really convincing. But the technology is actually very good because it 
it allows you to um, to create applications that um, really make use of a workflow that uh, separates design and development, depending on which APIs you use. So uh, you have the designer and you have the developer, and uh, in an ideal world, the designer creates a very nice HTML um, <laughs> interface, user interface, and uh, the developer codes the business logic. And those two only meet to uh, define an interface and uh, talk to each other about small bugs in the, in the HTML or, or stuff like that. And um, so we thought it would be interesting to focus on that. And um, actually, the back to browse or virtual machine is just enabling technology to um, get this kind of workflow on all of the interesting devices. And uh, in the meantime, um, so, so basically what we want is, we want on the one side the designer write HTML and CSS, and the developer write Java, because Java is a language where you can create big projects. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, big projects and, and a lot of um, people who, who have done it and proved it that, that it's possible to do it. Because of the static typing, you have very good IDE support, and um, you, have, um, you have code completion and all of the stuff, a lot of libraries that you can use. So what we want is this. We want to, to have an HTML page and uh, we want to have a Java file and we want to connect them somehow. Do the rendering uh, um, in this declarative uh, HTML format and just like change, for example, the data model in Java depending on something that's happening on the server or locally. So that's why uh, we basically uh, redefined the project and gave it uh, also a new name because Back to Browser is just one aspect of it. Um, and the new name is Duke Script, obviously Duke uh, Script because JavaScript is lying about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because there is no Java in JavaScript and the name is already taken. <laughs> so we decided to call it Duke Script. Well, this is the real. JavaScript. This puts Java back in. Exactly. That, that is JavaScript as it's meant to be. It's a very nice language. So, and you can use it um, with a lot of different uh, JVMs. So, not only back to browser, but you can use the Hotspot JVM, you can use um, RoboVM or Dalvik, and um, with that you can, you can run on all the interesting devices. And alternatively, if you're not able to um, to get it to run, or as a as a first fallback before it's supported on on your fully supported on your platform, you can still use Back to Browser, or TVM, or, or, or something else, some 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 other JVM that is uh, using JavaScript. So um, with this, we can uh, we can run on on all of these interesting devices and. Yarda just yesterday sent me a screenshot uh, from his iPad proving that he can uh, run his Minesweeper game also on iOS. Uh, he, he showed it on, on, on Android before. So it's, it's, it's really working uh, with RoboVM now um, as well, at least um, in, in, the, in the iOS device simulator. And um, yeah, so, so this is basically the back end. So this is basically the, the technology that's behind it. You have, um, you have a way of creating J Java APIs and a very simple way of plugging into JavaScript libraries and um, creating Java interfaces, Java APIs for JavaScript libraries and program against them. And you can start, so if you, if you really want to start low level, you can start uh, and very easily port any JavaScript library and, and create an API for it. And that's basically how I started myself. So um, when, when uh, Yarda tried to sell me on the project, he, um, he knew that I was doing some, some game development. And I've got a, a little project that's called FX Games, and it's on GitHub. And uh, you can use that to, uh, to create simple 2D games, also with physics and, and, and stuff like that, a tile engine. And he said, so 
how about, uh, and, and it was using uh, JavaFX. And he said to me, um, so how about you can not only use JavaFX, but you can also uh, run it on the, on the iPad. So um, I created an abstraction on top of it, on top of the, um, the rendering layer, basically. And, um, and we used that um, to, uh, to render the games on, on, on both technologies. So, it, so now it's running with JavaFX and it's running uh, with HTML5 Canvas. And like this, you can very easily, it took me like, the, the first implementation of it took me like uh, uh, one afternoon. Uh, because it's really, really extremely simple to do that. Um, if you have advanced technologies like Knockout or Angular, binding frameworks, it's, it's a little bit, it's slightly uh, more complex. But uh, for simple APIs, like, like plugging into the canvas, it's, it's very, very simple. And um, so, so you, can, you can do that on your own, or you can use uh, what uh, Yarda created as an example, or what I created. So um, Yarda uh, used Knockout JS. So I don't know if you know who knows Knockout, Knockout JS. Okay. So it's an it's a, who knows Angular JS. Okay, a lot more people know <laughs> Angular than Knockout, but Knockout uh, also does uh, some kind of data binding. So you you can bind your uh, UI elements to a model and they will automatically update and, and stuff like that. So it's similar in that respect. And um, what Yarda did, he created an API and the Java API looks like that. You uh, define a class and um, there you use annotations uh, to define a model. So you have this model here with a couple of properties, first name, last name, both of uh, type string. And uh, you have a property um, name address, uh, array type of addresses. So it can be an array of addresses. And this defines a model that can be bound to, uh, to, um, to the HTML uh, via the typical knockout directives. But now uh, a class will be created for you and you can manipulate this class and you can set values and uh, get values and, and update the model and the HTML page will update for you. So it's really nice. And um, if you want to have a look, and I suggest that we all have a look um, later on, and maybe I should mention that the PDF of, uh, of this talk is somewhere online, if it yeah. is. Yeah, it will. <laughs> It will be online momentarily at a location to be <laughs> to be announced to be announced on the Twitter stream. Ah, nice. Okay, because um, I, I I gave I I gave um, I decided on some small tasks that you can that you can play with and that you can try out so you can get a feeling for how it uh, um, how it feels to develop with it. So um, okay, so you have so this way you can. Uh, provide a data model that you can update from Java and uh, you can read from Java and uh, you can also, so this is the second part where you define the addresses, also in a static class, address model here. Uh, you can find this code on the, uh, on the API doc and you have something like computed properties where you um, where you can like use the use strings and put them together to have um, cal to do calculations and stuff like that, and also uh, you can bind to these in your HTML page. And this is what the HTML looks like. So you have these um, data bind um, um, attributes here where you bind uh, this span to the full name, which is the computed property that we saw. And here we have uh, binding to the addresses, which is the, um, which, which is this address type that we saw um, on the name model. And um, yeah, you can, you can then have this for each loop and, and, and print all of these. And it's, um, so this is the way how you bind the data model to the um, to the back end. Okay, this is a duplicated, um, <laughs> duplicated slide. 
And um, just yesterday, I've released my API, which is independent of all of that. You can mix it with this, uh, but you can also use it independently. And that's the Canvas API. And it's now currently in the first release is version 0.5.2 for some technical reasons. <laughs> and you can find it on GitHub and um, have a look at it at the API and uh, play around with it. And the Canvas API, as I mentioned, uh, can render to, um, to this technology and it can also render to um, JavaFX directly. And uh, it's basically meant as a, um, as a way of, 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 of using your Canvas knowledge one-to-one. -one. So it's, it's very similar. You can use all the demos that you find in the web for Canvas. And, and just like instead of setting the properties directly with an equals, uh, you, you have a setter like you're used to in Java. But other than that, almost everything is the same. And so it looks like this. Um, you get a graphics context 2D. So currently uh, you have to use these factories um, in, in order to get a graphics. So either JavaFX or, um, or uh, HTML5. So this get or create method is going to look into the connected uh, HTML page for a canvas with this ID. And if it doesn't find one, it creates one in the page. And then you can use that and uh, set the line width, set a font, uh, fill text, and so on. Do, do stuff with it and, and, and play around, just like you would do with an HTML5 canvas, but from Java. And um, this is basically enabling technology. So um, it's, it's very low level. So you usually do not use it directly, but you use some API that is building on top of it. And one of the things that has been created using this, um, this API is, um, is a JavaFX implementation. So this is basically the, the prism layer of a JavaFX implementation that is running um, on, on that, that at least should be running in, in all modern browsers. And you can try for yourself because um, this, if you follow this link, it should open the demo. And here you can see one of the early JavaFX demos. I think <coughs> it was, uh, it's a 1.3 JavaFX <coughs> demo. Mm -hmm. And it's running in Chrome at a decent speed. And this is really uh, plain JavaFX. And in the back, it's using this, uh, this Canvas API. And as you can see in Chrome, it, it runs at a decent uh, frame rate. Uh, if you try the same in Firefox, uh, it's, it's <coughs> not at the same speed, but that's because it's using back to browser here. But in case you're using a different virtual machine, it, uh, uh, the, it, it, the performance would probably be better. So that is one use case for it. And another use case is my um, games library, FX Games. And <laughs> since, I, since I changed a lot of stuff, in the games library, these demos here are not running in uh, <laughs> currently in the HTML5 version. So, um, but I can show one very simple game as a demo, and that is uh, that is Pong. And this Pong version is basically a, a, a game. <coughs> that you can use in, in, uh, for, for JavaFX and, for, um, and uh, for the HTML5 version. The only thing that you need to do is you need to pass in a graphics context right at the, at the moment. Because I, I uh, tried a different uh, way as well to use some kind of service loader approach to, um, to load the, um, the graphics context depending on what is on the, um, on the, on the path, on the class path. But uh, that didn't really work because of misconfigured projects. It's very easy to uh, simply get two implementations uh, in, in the background. But I, I, I will try to fix that. For now, you have to create the graphics context yourself for the different, uh, for the different platforms. 
But uh, what this does is it's a version of Pong that uses JBox 2D, uh, which is a physics engine. So it's maybe not as simple <laughs> as, as the normal Pong, but almost <coughs> as simple. So here you can see the demo. And you might, you might realize that actually the ball is not linear. <coughs> but it's, it's really using gravity in this case. And um, I had a hard time really getting the physics model right because typically due to friction the ball would start to spin and, and behave really crazy if you do something like that. And as you can see, I'm really very good at this game. <laughs> so I think they're slightly distracted by the robot trying to walk around as well. <laughs> so he's, he's in a, his autonomous life mode. So he's going to attempt to look for faces and then try to walk so he can face the person who's nearby. So currently, he likes Babs. <laughs> <laughs> He's been focused on Babs all night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wants... I'm, I'm pretty sure that she's going to steal him. <laughs> so he should be careful. Okay, so if you want to play around with it, um, it might... Actually, at the moment, it, it, it still might not work. <coughs> although the Canvas uh, dependencies are fixed now, and Canvas is now publicly available on Maven Central. Um, it still has some dependencies to my version of JBox2D because I've, I slightly ad adjusted some of the things in JBox2D to work on back to browser and I didn't uh, fix them back because right now it should work out of the box. Okay, so this is, um, this is Duke script and um, I think the best way to get a uh, feeling for new technology is starting to hack on it. And uh, in order to make that simple, we created Maven archetypes for it. So uh, if you have your laptop here, um, um, and we have the PDF somewhere. Yeah, okay. So I did, I did post the PDF online. Okay, uh, cool. Let me, let me pop the camera back to full screen. So it's, it's, it, it's probably much easier with the PDF. You've got a couple of links that you can follow. So you can try out, uh, you can have a look at the API doc. Yeah, so um, I, would, I would tell you guys to look for Twitter for the link for the slides, but apparently our um, stream is so popular we took down Twitter. <laughs> they're, they're having technical issues with their, you can, you can see evidence right here of um, the fact that we have, we have crashed Twitter. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what we need to do is, um, instead, yes? I can fix that. You, you can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to hook up your new, your new product to, to Twitter and debug the performance issues for them? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So you're, you're already on IM with Adam. and you're trying. Don't to believe him, he's the person who crashed the Lufthansa site. He did a range query. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you check my SlideShare account, it's um, Steve on Java, and my SlideShare, the the most recently posted presentation is Tony's is Tony's okay. talk. Um, and before we start the lab, I think this is also probably a good time to to go through some of the stuff like about the tour and other right. things, and then we'll we'll probably cut off the the live stream for folks because they right. they don't need to sit around and and watch us trying to do it. Also, we're having network issues, so it's not as live as it should be. So that's why, that's why, that's why we have people keep coming in. It's because they, they knew that they were going to miss out if they didn't physically come here. Okay. Okay, so first, first a little bit about the, um, the tour itself. So this is the tour site. It'll, it'll refresh in a sec. And, um, well, what, the t what, the, what it shows is it shows where I am currently. So it shows, you know, I'm, I'm over here in 
in Munich. And as I travel around Europe, it updates in real time. So we're using a, an open source project called Miyataru, which in Japanese means like where are you or location? It's, it's some Japanese thing. It's very it's very um, very appropriate. I don't know. I don't know what it means exactly. It means something. It means something. <laughs> and I have stops lined up for the next two months all throughout Europe. Um, so visiting, going to Poland for Makerland, visiting, you know, Jugs in the Czech Republic and Krakow and Poznan, and then sweeping back through Germany over all the way to Portugal. Um, and then finishing up in Devox, France, and I'll stop back in Munich for a bit and then head to India. So. And give, your, give back your massive bike that yes. you, that you <laughs> rented today. And, um, yeah. Oh, Javaland. Java. What? Yeah, no, we're having network issues okay. with the local stream. So the recording will come out fine, and I'll post it later. And okay. Yeah, it's all good. Um, and then there's a list of all the events. So if you guys were like traveling and you wanted to visit another user group, you know, you can you can come join me on motorcycle or or car and, and go visit all these tomorrow. different places um, tomorrow. But the event is Thursday in Prague and Friday in Bruna. <laughs> okay, and you know, of course, we 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 want to visit and support good community conferences like um, Java Land. Exactly, a new I'm conference there as well. being run in a in a, there, in a theme so. park. Okay, so that's a little bit about the tour, um, and all of that'll be live streamed, so you can follow Night Hacking um, website or my Twitter handle underscore Night Hacking to find out more about that. And also, let me find. Okay, so the new edition of Java Mag is out. So this Java is a little 8 video is here, put together. And it means better productivity uh, for developers as well as expanded Okay, no audio. To the cloud. <laughs> Java Magazine, we drill down into the most significant features in Java SE8, Lambda Expressions, the new date and time API, Oracle Nashorn, now. and much more. We'll and we look at why Java ME8 is a comprehensive platform for the African Internet guy. of Things. This <laughs> issue has <laughs> lots of hands-on how-to articles <laughs> that help you get started with Java 8. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> download Java 8 today and explore the possibilities. <laughs> if you're not a subscriber to Java Magazine, it's easy and it's free. Just go to oracle.com forward slash Java Magazine and click on the subscribe link. All right, so basically what um, um, what Caroline was saying, she's the chief editor for Java Mag, is the, the new edition has lots of good articles on Lambdas and other stuff for um, Java 8 launch, so check it out. But also, you can take the articles and republish them freely. So if you want to take articles out of Java Mag, you can post them on your own websites for your company or personal blogs. And she's also looking for folks to write articles. So she's looking for folks who are interested in writing articles in the upcoming Java Magazine issues. So, if you've always wanted to be a magazine author, the Java Mag has very good viewership. I think they get tens of thousands of people who download and read the articles on Java Magazine. Um, you know, maybe we need a good, I don't know, article on some complicated mathematics. What, what, was, what was the faculty of? I, I can't remember. But, you know, the stuff yeah, yeah, that you yeah. guys are working on. Right. Write us a good article. And I'll put you in touch with Caroline. Oh, and the last, last announcement thing, and this comes with a prize, because we like prizes. Do, do, do. Uh, which one was it? Oh, this one. So there's a developer challenge going on, run by OTN, the Internet Things Developer Challenge. And you um, build a project using um, Raspberry Pi and Java SE Embedded enter the contest and you can win one of nine trips to Java One, including free flight and um, conference pass. Oh, it's really cool. So, um, to get you guys started, we have, we have hardware to give away. Where's our, there it is.
<laughs> yeah, so you're, you're pointing out the obvious because you've been to, to um, San Francisco, clearly. $2,000 will get you a hotel for a night. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Where? <laughs> okay, so, so Tony, we need a question for the audience, and then whoever gets the answer right. So Duke script question about something which you... Um, yeah, I think they have to, uh, they have to first uh, do the uh, demo. Do the, do the lab? Okay, so do we'll give lab. this away after the lab. Yeah. We'll come up with an equitable way to decide who wins this, right? Yeah. Okay. And actually, I, I, I gave you some, some forums. So uh, if you hit rough corners, we want to know. We want to, we want to learn what uh, to improve in terms of API usability. So have a look at the, at the tasks and, and play around with it and let us know what we, where we uh, screwed it. <laughs> okay, and finally, um, you know, of course, come out to Java 1 San Francisco. Um, like I was telling Marcus, I, I freely promote our conference at other people's events all the time. Am I allowed to go to Java 1 and talk about Java 1? Sure. Uh, okay. May I come to Java 1 and talk about Java 1? I, <laughs> I, I, I would not be opposed. That's good. Tip for tap. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's not a lot of overlap between, perhaps. But I mean, like, going to Java Land wouldn't preclude the other, and going to Java One wouldn't preclude you going to Java Land. They're very different conferences. Why one get two? Yeah, that'd be a good promotion. Yeah, okay, I'll we'll work on that. So I, I'll get the Java Land ticket. <laughs> then. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the stream, well, live, because it's not really live. It's kind of flickering in and out. And yeah. then cut the recording. Okay. And then we'll, we'll work on the lab, and I'm going to see if we can get Jim Weaver on the Hangout, because mm -hmm. he's been on the stream to say hi. Okay. All right, so thanks, everyone, for joining our first events on the stream.